Welcome back to Money Mastery, the place where we unlock the secrets of the financial world. If you're new here, consider subscribing to our channel, where we delve into the complexities of finance, making it accessible and understandable for everyone. Today, we are turning back the clock, way back to the early 18th century. We're embarking on a journey to understand one of the most notorious financial bubbles in history, the South Sea Bubble. A tale of unchecked speculation, grand illusions of wealth, and ultimately, disaster. It is a fascinating story, not just because of its historical significance, but because of its lasting impact on our understanding of financial markets. What lessons can we, as 21st century investors, learn from the South Sea Bubble? Are we immune to such speculative mania, or are we just as vulnerable as those hopeful investors from centuries ago? Over the next quarter hour, we'll explore these questions, shedding light on the phenomena of speculation and the greater fool theory in the process. We'll delve into the historical background, explain the build-up and burst of the South Sea bubble, analyze the impact, and draw out important lessons. So sit tight, and let's unravel this complex tale of ambition, illusion, and financial catastrophe together. Before we dive in, let's get interactive. Have you ever heard of the South Sea Bubble? What do you know about it? Let us know in the comments below. Let's begin our journey. Our journey takes us back to England in the early 18th century. This was a time of exploration, colonialism, and rapid expansion of global trade. Amidst this backdrop, the South Sea Company was born in 1711. The South Sea Company was formed, backed by a royal charter from Queen Anne. The company was more than just a trading venture. It was part of a grand financial arrangement to manage the national debt incurred by England during the War of Spanish Succession. To understand the South Sea Bubble, we must first understand the economic conditions of England at the time. The country was grappling with huge war debts. To ease this burden, the government allowed the South Sea Company to assume a significant part of the national debt. In exchange, the company was granted exclusive trading rights in the South Seas, what we now refer to as South America. This is where our story takes a speculative turn. Shareholders in the South Sea Company were promised hefty returns from this exclusive trade agreement. The anticipation of immense wealth from the largely unknown and exotic South Seas stirred imaginations and ignited a buying frenzy. The company's share price began to rise, and rise it did, dramatically. At the same time, the company cleverly fueled speculation, spreading stories of unimaginable wealth and prosperity to be had from their monopoly over the South Seas trade. But as we know, all that glitters is not gold. This was a bubble waiting to burst. The frenzy of speculation and illusions of wealth would soon come crashing down. But before we delve into the burst of this infamous bubble, we'll first unpack the concepts of speculation and the greater fool theory, two key elements that played a significant role in the South Sea Saga. To truly understand the South Sea bubble, we must first clarify what we mean by a bubble. In financial terms, a bubble occurs when prices for a particular asset skyrocket far beyond its intrinsic value due to rampant speculation, only to crash dramatically when the unrealistic expectations driving the price upward fail to materialize. In the case of the South Sea Company, this speculative fervor was stoked by tales of vast wealth to be made from trade in the South Seas. By the summer of 1720, the company's share prices had skyrocketed, reaching an all-time high in July. This astronomical rise in value wasn't based on the company's trade profits, which were, in reality, quite minimal. Instead, it was fueled by widespread speculative mania and the illusion of easy wealth. However, by the late summer of 1720, the bubble began to burst. Questions started to arise about the actual profitability of the South Sea Company. This, coupled with the inability of the company to pay dividends to its shareholders from trade profits, triggered panic. Within a matter of weeks, the company's share prices plummeted, leaving many investors financially ruined. The fallout was severe and immediate. Not only were individuals devastated, but the entire English economy was shaken. Public outrage followed, and the government was forced to step in to stabilize the situation. Many prominent figures, including politicians and aristocrats, were implicated, further escalating the crisis. The South Sea Bubble serves as a cautionary tale of speculation gone wild and the dire consequences of the greater fool theory in action. But what exactly do we mean by these terms? Let's take a closer look. When we talk about speculation, 
we refer to the act of conducting a risky financial transaction in the hope of substantial profit. This is done with the belief that the price of an asset will significantly move in a particular direction. In the case of the South Sea bubble, speculative buying was rampant. Buyers weren't investing based on the intrinsic value of the South Sea Company, which was negligible, but rather on the hope that the price would continue to rise and they could sell their shares at a profit. This brings us to the greater fool theory. The theory suggests that one can make money from an overpriced asset, as long as there is a greater fool willing to buy it at an even higher price. Again, the South Sea bubble was a classic example of this theory in action. People bought overpriced shares, believing they could sell them to someone else willing to pay even more. But when the bubble burst, the greater fools were those left holding the worthless shares. While speculation and the greater fool theory can drive prices sky high in the short term, they eventually lead to disastrous consequences when the bubble bursts, as there are no longer any greater fools left to buy. This was precisely the fate that befell the South Sea Company and its shareholders. To fully grasp the allure and danger of the South Sea bubble, let's look at a well-known figure who got caught up in the frenzy, none other than Sir Isaac Newton, renowned scientist and mathematician. Newton, despite his vast intellect, was not immune to the siren call of easy wealth. In early 1720, he invested a significant sum in the South Sea Company. When the share prices started to rise, Newton, initially, made a tidy profit. However, as the frenzy escalated and prices soared, Newton was lured back in. He reinvested a larger sum, at a much higher price, expecting the boom to continue. But when the bubble burst later that year, Newton found himself on the losing end. His losses were enormous, reportedly equivalent to more than a million pounds in today's currency. Newton's experience with the South Sea bubble is a poignant reminder that no one, not even one of history's greatest minds, is immune to the perils of speculation and the lure of quick riches. Reflecting on his loss, Newton reportedly said, I can calculate the movement of the stars, but not the madness of men. It's a quote that perfectly encapsulates the unpredictable and irrational nature of financial bubbles. Let's now turn to Thomas Guy, the founder of Guy's Hospital in London. Guy had made a fortune as a bookseller and was known for his savvy investments. Seeing an opportunity, Guy invested heavily in the South Sea Company. However, unlike many, he sold his shares at a profit before the bubble burst. But here's the twist. When prices began to plummet, he bought back in, expecting a recovery. Instead, the prices continued to drop, and Guy found himself nursing a substantial loss. Sir Robert Walpole, who is often regarded as the first Prime Minister of Great Britain, also fell victim to the South Sea bubble. Walpole had warned against the speculative frenzy but was unable to prevent it. When the bubble burst, Walpole himself suffered significant financial losses. However, the political fallout was even more substantial. Walpole was forced to lead the effort in restoring public credit and confidence, a daunting task that had a considerable impact on his political career. King George I himself was significantly involved in the South Sea Company. He was made the governor of the company when it was formed, which helped build public trust. While the king was not known to be an active investor, his royal endorsement boosted the company's reputation. However, when the bubble burst, it caused not only financial turmoil but also a scandal in the royal court. The king's credibility was severely damaged, and this period became a dark chapter in his reign. John A. Slabby, the Chancellor of the Exchequer at the time, was another prominent figure implicated in the South Sea bubble. He was a key player in promoting the scheme and personally invested in it. When the bubble burst, A. Slabby not only faced severe financial loss but also ended up being the political scapegoat for the disaster. He was found guilty of corruption and imprisoned, his assets seized. His downfall serves as a stark reminder of the far-reaching consequences of the bubble. The South Sea bubble's burst sent shockwaves throughout Britain and beyond. Investors from all walks of life, from influential politicians and nobility to everyday tradespeople, faced ruin. The national economy plunged into a severe recession. But from this financial disaster, significant changes emerged. In the face of public outrage and economic crisis, the government was forced to intervene and take action to restore public faith and stabilize the economy. Under the leadership of Sir Robert Walpole, Parliament established an inquiry into the South Sea Company. 
those found guilty of corruption, like John Aislabi, were severely punished. Their estates were confiscated to help repay the national debt. In the long term, the South Sea bubble prompted tighter financial regulations. The government sought to control the rampant speculation that had contributed to the bubble. This resulted in the introduction of laws that laid the groundwork for modern financial regulation. The aftermath of the South Sea bubble was indeed a dark period for the British economy. It took several years for it to recover from the devastating blow. While some sectors bounced back relatively quickly, others were scarred for much longer. It's estimated that it took nearly a decade for the economy to fully regain its pre-bubble strength. This episode serves as a stark reminder of how long the shadow of a financial crisis can be, and how critical it is to learn from our history to prevent such catastrophes in the future. The South Sea bubble may be a historical event, but it holds critical lessons for us today. The financial practices, human behaviors, and governmental responses involved in this episode offer timeless insights into how we navigate our economic systems. Lesson 1. The danger of speculation first and foremost, the South Sea bubble is a stark reminder of the dangers of speculation. When the promise of easy wealth overtakes rational decision-making, the result can be a financial bubble that, when it bursts, leaves devastation in its wake. We must remain aware of this, carefully evaluating investment opportunities and the risks they pose. Lesson 2. Greater Fool Theory The bubble also brought the greater fool theory into sharp focus. This theory suggests that one can profit from overpriced assets because there will always be someone, a greater fool, who is willing to pay a higher price. However, as we've seen with the South Sea bubble when the greater fools run out, the price collapses, often leaving the last investors with substantial losses. Lesson 3. Need for Regulatory Oversight The South Sea bubble also underscores the need for regulatory oversight in financial markets. Without regulations and responsible governmental intervention, unchecked speculation can lead to disastrous consequences, affecting not just individual investors but entire economies. Lesson 4. Impact on society and let's not forget the broader societal implications. The South Sea bubble didn't just affect those who invested in the company, its impacts rippled through society, causing widespread financial hardship and loss of trust in the financial system. It's a sobering reminder that the health of our economy directly influences our societal well-being. Lesson 5. Human nature Lastly, the South Sea bubble teaches us about human nature, our tendencies towards greed, fear, and herd mentality. These are factors we must always be mindful of when engaging with financial markets. History doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. So, let's use these lessons from the past to guide us toward a more informed, responsible, and sustainable economic future. Let's quickly recap what we've learned today. The South Sea bubble was a financial catastrophe driven by rampant speculation and an illusion of easy wealth. When the bubble burst, it resulted in widespread financial ruin and had significant social and political impacts. From this historical event, We've learned the dangers of speculation, the pitfalls of the greater fool theory, and the importance of investment diversification. These lessons still hold relevance for us as investors today. No matter how sophisticated our financial markets seem today, they are not immune to the speculative mania that fueled the South Sea bubble. As investors, we need to approach financial decisions with a critical eye, focusing on fundamental value rather than getting caught up in the frenzy. The South Sea bubble serves as a stark reminder of the perils of unchecked speculation and the pursuit of quick riches. Let's take its lessons to heart, ensuring that history does not repeat itself. Thank you for joining us on this journey through one of the most dramatic events in financial history. If you found this video enlightening, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Stay tuned to Money Mastery for more insights into the world of finance. Remember. Understanding the past is key to mastering the future.